Now it's time to hand over to my friend Eamon Moyudin. But before I do, Eamon, a topic that you and I have covered for years is back in the headlines, especially since Friday. Israel's occupation of East Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza and the violence we're now seeing in and around one of Islam's holiest sites, the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. More than 170 people injured, more than 20 Palestinians killed. What bothers me, Eamon, is that some of the headlines in the news really don't do justice to the nature of that violence on the ground. It's always about clashes, clashes. Uh, in my view, uh, a bit of a lazy journalistic term because it doesn't identify who or what is driving the violence. Clashes implies two equal sides with equal powers, doesn't it? Two equally responsible parties for the violence. And yet the missing context here always matters. One side is the occupier. The other side is occupied. One side right now in Jerusalem is throwing stones, yes. The other side is firing stun grenades and rubber bullets, including reportedly into people's eyes. And look, I get it. The Israelis have their security concerns. You have more than a dozen people in Israel killed, many others wounded over the past few weeks in horrific shootings and stabbings. And we all, of course, condemn those attacks on innocent civilians. But, Eamon, that doesn't justify, though, the scenes we're seeing in Jerusalem right now. It doesn't justify an Israeli operation inside one of Islam's holiest sites during this month of Ramadan. I'm pretty sure people would be up in arms if the American government, say, was violently raiding a major church during Easter, would they not? Yeah, I mean, listen, you bring up a lot of interesting points. And Mahdi, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, when the Western media was not paying attention to what was happening in uh, Jerusalem, I specifically warned on this show and others about the escalating situation on the ground that included uh, the death of a Palestinian-American citizen in Israeli custody, Israel demolishing Palestinian homes, displacing others from their houses, the killing uh, of a prominent Palestinian anti-occupation activist who was struck by an Israeli police vehicle. And somehow, all of that is not mentioned in the coverage that you're talking about as precursors or context to what we are seeing now unfold in occupied East Jerusalem. And, and what's worse, to your point, than these generalizations by the media that you highlighted that obfuscate what is happening is the official response that we're now hearing from Western governments. I mean, look, for the past 50 plus days, uh, the West has been promoting the right of a people to self-defense and the right to resist occupation. But that was for, of course, Ukrainians. When it comes to Palestinians and their right to resist occupation, the U.S. government just doesn't see it in the same way. The U.S. ambassador to Israel actually put out this statement saying it was encouraging all parties to work together to ensure calm. It was like a classic example of the both sides must do better that completely ignores, again, to your point, that one side is being occupied for 50 plus years. The other side is the occupier. And then we wonder why nothing ever changes or gets better. And, and the yeah. bottom line, Mehdi, is... Uh, we all have to do better. The media just has to do better. The governments have to do better because it's not a sustainable situation.